A scientist, Kevin Dornwinkle, is mocked by his colleagues due to the failure of his invisibility serum. This drives him mad, ending their lives at that very moment. He's sent to a psych ward to punish his evil deeds and avoid other trouble that he may cause. Unbeknownst to them, this won't stop him from fulfilling his ambitions. A psychologist explains to a mother, Mrs. Dornwinkle, that her child is mentally and emotionally unstable, so he has to be raised with gentleness and understanding. However, he also points out that he's borderline genius and is currently very confused, so proper guidance is essential. Meanwhile, the son, Kevin, enjoys peeping on his female neighbor using his telescope. His mom suddenly enters and catches his immoral deeds. She rages and slaps the boy, reprimanding him firmly and emphasizing that women are evil. Ultimately, she grounds the boy in the room for a year, blocking all windows. This makes Kevin cry while his mom laughs triumphantly. Years later, Dr. Kevin Dornwinkle, a scientist, calls a conference to present his invisible serum to his colleagues. He confidently injects his serum into himself instead of using an animal to prove its effectiveness. Unfortunately, it fails, which solicits mocking from the group of doctors. Kevin can't tolerate the humiliation, so he attacks his colleagues and ends the lives of four of them. The event is reported on national TV, including Dr. Dornwinkle's fate of being sent to an asylum due to a psychiatrist identifying him as mentally incapable of standing on trial. Six months later, Kevin Dornwinkle jumps out of the hospital window while hounds chase after him. The crazed man outwits the dogs by making them fetch a piece of wood far from him, which makes him escape successfully. After two weeks, summer school begins, and the students gossip enthusiastically about their physics teacher who passed away. Instead of feeling sympathy, most of them are just concerned about how to get away from class. Then, the principal, Mrs. Cello, bursts into the room, and the students immediately sit properly, like ideal students. She introduces Dr. Dornwinkle as Dr. Kevin Smith as the substitute physics teacher and entrusts the students under his care. Afterward, Kevin begins the class by expressing his desire to have a pleasant time for everyone. Then, he awkwardly explains how physics is essential to people. He asks for the four basic principles of physics and calls a pretty student named Vicky. She purposely answers the four basic food groups instead, and the entire class laughs at the scenario. Kevin controls his emotions and proceeds to the lecture, which disappoints the class, thinking they could slack off if the teacher walked out on them. After a few hours, the cheerleaders practice their routine at the gymnasium while Kevin watches on the sidelines, enjoying the view of the flipping short skirts and reliving his pent-up fantasies about women. Meanwhile, the male students also watch the cheerleaders practice. Chet, one of the students, calls Bunny, his girlfriend, to the bleachers. Chet doesn't waste time and kisses Bunny, even suggesting to do the deed right then and there. The woman playfully rejects him and tells him she'll meet him after class. Then, they insult Dornwinkle, and Chet conspires with Bunny to prank their substitute teacher. They end the conversation by kissing, and the cheerleader calls the others to shower. Unbeknownst to them, Kevin can hear their conversation. As they go on their way, Chet bumps into the janitor, Henry, and mocks him for being mute. After a while, the cheerleaders shower without knowing that Chet is peeping on them. Once satisfied, the young man happily strides away. However, Dr. Dornwinkle replaces him and sees his female students enjoying themselves in the shower. Suddenly, someone holds his shoulders, so he crouches in shock and immediately gets defensive, saying it's nothing. Mrs. Cello gets confused about Dornwinkle's reaction, so he explains that he dropped some change on the floor and he's looking for them. The principal shares a similar experience and informs him that April's parents request him to tutor her in physics. She hands him the phone number and address, then Dornwinkle leaves. Later that night, the teacher records his voice to document his day. He expresses disappointment about his student's attitude towards him, especially his genuine efforts being unreciprocated. However, he tries to look at the brighter side of being allowed to teach and resume his experiment. The next day, he goes to work and returns home to continue his invisibility serum. Soon, he finds the missing component of his formula, HS3. He excitedly pours a bit of the solution into his mixture. At 2.37 a.m., Monday, June 21, he injects the serum into his rabbit and waits for the result. However, he fails again. Dr. Dornwinkle hasn't lost hope, as he knows he's getting closer to correlating the atom according to his new formula. He completes his invisibility serum with HS3 and the granulated beryliox by uniting atoms and space. At 11.36 p.m., Monday, June 28, he injects the rabbit with the new serum, and it finally succeeds. 15 seconds after injection, the bunny turns invisible. Afterward, the scientist injects himself with the serum too. He feels his body heating up, and his heartbeat becomes faster. Then, the serum takes effect and he becomes invisible. He celebrates by declaring that he single-handedly worked on the invisibility serum and laughs dementedly. Ten minutes later, the rabbit regains its original form. Upon seeing this, the doctor falls asleep and dreams about his female student 
roommates who are showering and inviting him to join them. Suddenly, he wakes up and realizes it's already morning. He records his voice for documentation and narrates the side effect, especially its effect on his dreams and his urge to re-inject himself again. Then, he remembers that Mrs. Cello gave him April's address. That night, he injects himself with the serum and goes to the student's home. He sees April sleeping soundly, so he slowly pulls her blanket. Then, he carefully tugs her nightgown, exposing her upper body. April moves as she sleeps, so Dr. Dornwinkle leaves. The following day, Dornwinkle goes to work early, but he's startled when Vicky approaches him seductively, suggesting that she'll do anything to get an A in physics. Dornwinkle refuses and tells her to focus on the proper ways to advance in the subject, but the student takes his hand and places it on her chest. Suddenly, the bell rings, and students come flooding the room, so Vicky pretends nothing happens. To deviate his attention, Dornwinkle gives the students a surprise quiz. Everyone complains, but the teacher stands firm, so they take the quiz. Soon, the students, led by Gordon, glance at each other mischievously. Then, everyone drops their book on the floor simultaneously, startling Dornwinkle. The students laugh at his bewildered expressions, but the event reminds the scientist of his previous experiences with his mom and fellow scientists, so he blows up. He screams at them while retrieving their papers and announcing that everyone gets an F which changes the mood of the class to a sour one. Simultaneously, Principal Cello calls Chet to her office via intercom. When the student arrives in the office, the principal explains that his grades are unsatisfactory, which can make it difficult for him to go to college. Chet inquires about his football scholarship, but Mrs. Cello proclaims that it's only possible if she approves it. With this, Chet asks what should be done, and the principal suggests that she can compromise as she unbuttons her shirt. The condition she gives is for Chet to make her feel like a woman. Later, the cheerleaders finish their practice and hit the showers. While in the shower room, they gossip about their physics teacher, insulting him. Vicky tells the ladies about her ploy in seducing the teacher and how he thought she was serious, so they all make fun of the man. Unbeknownst to them, Dornwinkle used the serum, and he's already in the showers, watching them bathe. In his mind, he narrates that another side effect of the serum is making one's deepest desire stronger. As the cheerleaders leave, Vicky remains in the showers, unaware Henry is peeking at her. Unexpectedly, Chet grabs the man and threatens him to leave. The janitor tries to tell him something, but Chet ignores him, shooing the older man away. Then, he watches Vicky instead. That evening, Kevin has a nightmare of all the past events he encountered, starting from his traumatic childhood with his mom. He overhears the psychologist explaining how horrible he is as he can hurt women, especially since he can be invisible. The following day, Henry enters the men's room, but Chet and Gordon drive him out. The students comment on how weird the mute is, then talk about how they'd continue pranking Dornwinkle, unaware that their teacher overhears them from the other cubicle. Later, Dornwinkle is in the middle of his class when Principal Cello summons him to her office. Once he enters the office, he finds the principal on her chair that's turned away from him. The woman inquires about his personal life, especially if he has a wife or a girlfriend. When he informs her there's none, Mrs. Cello turns around and approaches him wearing a black nightgown. Then, she tells him that she finds him attractive and suggests that they must fulfill each other's needs. However, the scientist refuses her, which makes her mad. Because of this, Mrs. Cello shows him the empty syringe he used for the invisibility serum. She threatens him and dials the phone to call the police. Kevin approaches Mrs. Cello slowly, then caresses her cheek and kisses her. While doing so, he cautiously grabs the letter opener and stabs the woman. Afterward, he returns to the classroom while spaced out, but once he opens the door, a bucket of water pours onto him. He sees that his students have all left the room, making him scream in frustration. He runs out and locks all doors in the school before he injects himself with the invisibility serum. Meanwhile, Betty and Bubba, Kevin's students, sit in the cafeteria while the news of the continuous search for Dr. Kevin Dornwinkle gets announced on the radio. Bubba turns the radio off, uninterested in the current events. Betty agrees with him, and they suddenly kiss passionately. However, Bubba's arm is lifted as he struggles against something. The invisible Dornwinkle stuffs his face with a sandwich while Betty screams in confusion and horror. The woman watches as the sandwich is pushed forcefully to Bubba's throat. Betty runs away in fright, but the scientist catches up to her. He pulls her blouse and upper garment off, then strangles her with the emergency fire hose. Dornwinkle leaves her lifeless body on the ground while laughing crazily toward his next destination. A few moments later, two cheerleaders, April and Joan, find the doors locked, so they go on a detour, only to find Betty's body. They run away to ask for help, so they enter their classroom, where they see their teacher. They inform their physics teacher about Betty and the doors. Kevin tells them their story sounds strange, so the students mention calling the police. Dornwinkle yells at them, but he tries to compose himself by explaining that he's just worried for the safety of the students, so he'll be the one to go out to call the police. Once he does, the cheerleaders try to calm down, trusting their teacher. They don't notice when the door opens again,
again as they're busy figuring things out. Dornwinkle, who's invisible again, speaks to them mischievously. The ladies hear his voice, but since they see nothing, they feel nervous and head out of the room, only to find it locked. Then, the invisible scientist throws the globe at them. He pushes April out of the way as he rips Joan's blouse. He drags the student towards the aquarium and drowns her there. Right after, Dornwinkle calls April and laughs mockingly as she knows he's invisible. Then, he strangles her and laughs in satisfaction. On the other hand, Gordon and Vicky finish a game in the gym. Gordon notices that there aren't many people around, but his girlfriend ignores his concern as she tells him she's going to shower. Vicky turns on the radio and unclothes while Gordon waits outside. Once she hits the shower, she hears thumps and calls her boyfriend, thinking it's him. However, the radio is tossed on the puddled floor. Vicky screams as she gets electrocuted. After some time, Gordon gets tired of waiting and follows his girlfriend. He arrives at the women's lockers, but no one answers, even if the lights are on. He opens Vicky's locker and finds her there, lifeless. He screams in fright, but the invisible Dornwinkle suddenly punches him, so he runs away. Unfortunately, he can't leave the school because all the doors are locked, and no matter where he goes, the scientist follows him and beats him. Gordon tries to fight back, but he can't see where the enemy is, so he has no choice but to run. He arrives at the rooftop and lands some punches at Dornwinkle, but he's still overpowered. After being beaten to a pulp, he announces he gives up, but the mad scientist punches him until he steps by the rooftop's edge. With one final blow, Gordon falls and drops on a car below, ending his life, while Dornwinkle laughs in satisfaction. Meanwhile, Chet and Bunny enter Principal Cello's office without knowing that the woman's lifeless body is behind her desk. They share a passionate and intimate moment, just like Chet always wanted. Afterward, Bunny asks her boyfriend about marriage, highlighting their love. However, Chet brushes her off, pointing out that they need to take it easy since he doesn't want to end up like his parents, who divorced after marrying during high school. Bunny finds this sensible, and the two leave the office. Soon after, Henry enters the principal's office to clean. Finally, he sees the lifeless body of Mrs. Cello. He runs into the hallways and tries to warn the people, but being mute, only grunts can be heard out of his panic cries. Simultaneously, Bunny goes to the shower room to freshen up while Chet waits outside. She takes her towel but feels odd, so she opens Vicky's locker, only to find her friend's lifeless body. She shrieks in fright, calls Chet, and the man concludes that it's Henry who did it. Coincidentally, when they step out of the shower room, the janitor comes in, grunting in panic, so Chet beats him up until he's unconscious. The younger man is about to punch Henry again, but his arm is suddenly grabbed by the invisible Dornwinkle, laughing dementedly. The mad scientist pushes Chet and Bunny, and they both fall to the floor. He goes to the woman and petrifies her movements. Bunny calls Chet for help, but her boyfriend can't see anything on top of her. Kevin laughs and ruthlessly beats him up while mocking him. Luckily, Chet lands a punch on Dornwinkle, and Bunny informs him of the enemy's location as the blood drips from the scientist. Finally, he can hold Dornwinkle, and the two men struggle to win over the other. After a while, the serum loses its effect, and the students can see their physics teacher. Bunny asks him why, but all remorse is gone from him. Dornwinkle takes out another syringe attached to his leg, but he finds it empty. Chet grabs the chance to fight his teacher, but Dornwinkle is now entirely out of his mind. He punches Chet until he's unconscious, then turns to Bunny and jumps onto her, crushing her. Then, Dr. Kevin Dornwinkle heads out of the school with his bloody shoes and goes home. He documents himself on his tape recorder and narrates that the serum brings out the best and worst in him. He insults his students and laughs maniacally, but stops when a shotgun points at him. Chet angrily threatens him, stating that he already knows his real identity. However, Dornwinkle has no fear. He looks at his serum, but Chet stops him from getting it. The scientist hits the student's head with a glass bottle and grabs the chance to be invisible again. Not seeing his enemy, Chet blindly fires his rifle. Dornwinkle attacks him, and Chet sees another serum on the bed. He immediately injects himself and turns invisible. The two fight fiercely despite not seeing each other. Simultaneously, the police arrive at the door, but it's locked. Moments later, Chet's gun fires, and blood splatters in the room. A headless body wearing a white button-up shirt appears. At the same time, the cops break the door and find the corpse. Eventually, they conclude that Dornwinkle ended his own life. They retrieve a syringe of the invisibility serum and leave. As soon as they're out, Dornwinkle's laughter echoes in the room as he regains his original body. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.